Welcome to this Windows Server Basics video. In these videos, I will go over basic concepts related to the administration of Windows Server. In this video, we're going to talk about enabling and configuring an SSH server on Windows Server 25. SSH has been used for decades to remotely and securely connect to command line environments on Unix and Linux systems. There have also been various technologies over the years that you could add to Windows Server and Windows 11 to allow inbound remote SSH connections. But these required some finagling to get them working, so most administrators threw up their hands and went back to remote desktop or remote PowerShell sessions. With Windows Server 25, SSH server binaries are included in the default installation. Unlike earlier versions of Windows Server, you don't have to add any roles or features or third-party SSH server files. On Windows Server 25, with one click you can enable it, and with a couple of more clicks you can configure it. Let me show you how. Enabling the SSH server on Windows Server is as easy as enabling other remote administration technologies, such as remote desktop. From the Server Manager console, just choose the Local Server node. On the Local Server node, there is a new item, Remote SSH Access. By clicking on the blue text name Disabled, you can enable the SSH server. When you do this, a script runs turning everything on. You have to give the script permission to run, so here I type Yes. This bit of text in the script gives us important information about firewall settings and which accounts can connect to the SSH server, but we'll perform those configuration steps next. The first thing we need to address is the firewall rule. When you enable the firewall rule, the rule is enabled only for networks that are tagged as private. In this scenario, we are dealing with domain joint computers on a private network, so the network connection is tagged as domain. We open Windows Firewall with advanced security and under Inbound Rules, locate the rule, Open SSH SSH Server. We edit the properties of this rule, and on the Advanced tab, we ensure that the domain and private profiles are selected. The next thing we have to do is configure which user accounts can authenticate to the SSH server. We do this by editing the membership of a local group that is created when you enable the SSH server, which is the Open SSH Users Group. Here I am adding a single account to this group, but you could also choose to create a group in the domain and add the domain group to this local group to simplify the rollout of SSH server across multiple computers. Now that I've configured the firewall profile and the group membership, I jump across to a second computer. The easiest way to get an SSH client on a computer, besides installing WSL, is to use WinGet to install the Microsoft OpenSSH beta client. I install the client. To make a remote connection to the computer, on which I enabled the SSH server, which was called Tailwind MBR1, I need to use the following syntax, SSH domain name slash username at computer name. So in this case, SSH Tailwind Traders slash prime at Tailwind dash MBR1. I enter the command, I get the information about the server's key fingerprint, and if I want to continue, I type yes. This updates my local computer with its list of known hosts. I am then prompted for my password. I provide my password and I have now established a remote SSH session from one Windows Server computer to another. There is a lot more that we can do with SSH and in future I'll create a more detailed video about configuring SSH server options on Windows Server 25 including selecting which shell you connect to, key authentication, and so on. But if you look down in the video description, I've put some links to some docs articles that can tell you how to do this if you are excited to do it yourself. 
Enabling an SSH server on earlier versions of Windows Server is a bit cumbersome, but as you can see by this video, enabling it on Windows Server 25 takes only a few clicks. 